I've gone ahead and merged my demonstration systems with my production systems and placed them all on their own network in my house. And with that done, I can now cover Pixie booting. There are a few things that need to be set up in order to boot a Plan 9 machine over the network. If you already have a nice router in your house, or if you have one flashed with OpenWRT, you'll have to set it so that it points any DHCP request asking for the files to boot with uh, to your Plan 9 file server. In my case, I'll have my Plan 9 file server handling DHCP on my network. To do that, over in the config directory, or CFG, I have a directory in there named after my file server, which is just called files. And in there, I have an extra CPU RC uh, script. And this runs with the standard CPU RC script at boot and tells it to run the DHCP daemon and the TFTP daemon. Any DHCP request asking for Pixie boot will be directed to load the kernel from this TFTP server. Uh, and the network database uh, has entries set for which computer will be the TFTP server. And you also need to have an entry for the system that you'll be Pixie booting so that when a request comes in from a device with a specific MAC address, it will be told to boot with this file under boot t or boot f and then back to the config directory so under config pxe you will need to have a file named after the mac address of the computer you want to boot and in this file you'll basically put its plan 9 ini information in it and so this sort of takes the place of the plan9.ini file for the system you pixie boot. All right, so now I have the video capture hooked up to uh, the Dell that I'm going to pixie boot. And here it complains that there's no hard drive in there, uh, but I already set the BIOS to do pixie boot as an option, so I'll hit F1 to continue. And there it is. So I moved the auth server to a Raspberry Pi just to try a standalone auth server, but it's pretty slow. Not sure yet if it's a problem with the Pi or if running auth on the file server is inherently faster. And here we are. Uh, one of the limitations to Pixie booting is that it works fine for terminals. Um, basically starts up just like any other terminal. Uh, but it doesn't work as well for CPU servers because CPU servers still need an NVRAM partition to store the keys to automatically start as a given user. Um, it's a major reason I just boot my CPU servers off thumb drives because even the smallest thumb drives today are more than enough to hold the kernel, NVRAM partition, and heck, a complete 9 front install just in case I need it for recovery. Um, one thing I haven't tried just to see if I can, is to mount a drive using ATA over Ethernet and then use an NVRAM partition on it while Pixie booting. Uh, but that's a project for another day. So until then, have fun.